asked them if they had oh, any. Yeah. Oh, any um, oh, any oh, look at that bird. Must be some fish there. Yeah, must be some fish there. On the on the record. All right. What do you think of this blue heron right now? What do I think of him? Oh, beautiful. Quite a flyer. Oh, look at the look at the uh, colors in his back. Hello everyone, welcome to my own little adapted fitness video for seniors. I am at the Sun Yat-sen Garden right now. I've been invited by my friend Inger, who's right over here. She was gracious enough to give me one of her complimentary tickets. So first off, we're going to start stretching the neck here to the shoulder, side to side. This is adapted fitness, so you won't really need to get off your chair at all. Deep breathing. Side to side, very slowly, feeling your neck muscles relaxing. Extending one arm at a time, breathing in and out. Relax the shoulders. And let's try not to lean on the wall at all behind us or the back of the chair. You'd better not be you'd better not lean on the back of the chair. Inhale and exhale. And we're going to reach up and up. Up. So we're going to bring our attention to our toes. We're going to bring our feet slightly in front of us and press the big toe into the ground, making your heels very light as you roll your shoulders back if possible. Easy breaths, very good. And we're gonna roll the shoulders to the front. Roll them up and send them down to the front. Very good job, keep it up, keep going. And now we're going to just bring our attention to our posture as it is, as we are right now. And inhale, squeeze your bum, throw the shoulders back. Upright posture, exhale, without thinking too much about your posture. Inhale, nice and upright. Tuck your chin in, exhale. Daily posture, feels natural. Inhale, push your sits bones into the bench. Throw your shoulders back, exhale. Relax, one more time, inhale, squeeze your bum, and exhale, relax, very good. We're simply going to extend the legs one after another, one leg after another, pardon me, that's okay, take it in at your own time. Do your personal level that feels right, listening to your body, acknowledging any limits that you may have with your range of motion. It's a very good point, Inger. Not, the sides are not necessarily both equal. And now we're simply going to lift our toes up, up, And we're going to tap our heels down, down, down. And lift your toes up. Are you enjoying this, Inger? Yes, and I'm also enjoying the people who are coming and looking at and turning it up. The people who are coming and looking at us. Yes, but then they turn around because they don't want to infringe on our class. And the heels again. Heels, heels. We're going to move on to heels, toes. Heels, toes, heels, away we go, heels, toes, that's what we do, didn't it? And 
grew up. I grew up. Let's go open. Open. Close. Close. Close to Montreal. Oh. Oui, le français est ma langue maternelle. So, lastly, we're going to do a little bit of a brain workout. We're going to rub our belly and tap our heads. Or if you don't want to mess up your hair, you might wear a hat or <laughs> rub your belly and tap your head. And now we're going to reverse. We're going to rub over our head and tap our belly. So again, if you don't want to mess up your hair, you can simply roll hover over your hair and we're going to reverse rub your belly tap your head don't worry if you don't have it right it's fine just make sure to have fun with this exercise and let's rub over our head and tap the belly good well thank you so much for joining me for this peaceful zen workout today with my great friend Inger Inger do you want to hold my hand Yes. Lastly, I would simply like to ask you, Inger, um, I find you very articulate about the fact that you have MCI. So what does MCI stand for? Mild cognitive impairment. The, the, the big danger must be to not acknowledge those limits. Would you say that's correct? The limits impose themselves on you. So it's not exactly something you can control. No. And is there a sense of grief regarding the things you used to be able to do and you might not be able to do anymore? Indeed there is. Do you think that's something that might not be talked about enough in society? Oh, I don't think society as a whole talks about it. I'm in an MCI support group and we talk about it. Yeah. And we talk about the dumb things we did last week and stuff like that. And do you think that society perhaps should be talking more about it? They should be learning more about it. It should become more demystified? Yeah. What is something that you could say to, the, to our YouTube viewers uh, that would demyst demystify Alzheimer's disease, other forms of dementia, including everything that ties into mild cognitive disorder? Yeah. Impairment. Impairment, I mean. Yeah, well, it's Sorry. a disorder. It's a disorder. And, yeah. it's, and it's a first step, perhaps, towards dementia. The first step. And, and we may end up there, but mercifully, we, we, may, we die may die not, first. <laughs> we may die first. So it is a pretty widespread disease uh, when you are in a certain demographics. Yes. And if, if we all lived long enough, we would probably, mostly, end up with dementia. Wow, that's very deep. Mm, well, I, very I, No scary. wonder society doesn't want to talk about it. It's that's so scary. Right. No, actually, we were just crowded and we lived out on a farm and we lived in a community where a whole lot of the people, a whole lot, about five families were from Denmark. Five families, eh? Our job was to pay attention to our parents and do as we're told. My point being, MCI and other forms of dementia, I mean, they, this only makes the tragedy worse because we've put all our eggs into this notion of identity now. And this is really like the epitome of disaster, like as society sees it, like according... Yeah, yeah, as society sees it. Yeah. And, and the thing is that a lot of us are growing older now and in the old days, they died much younger. Wow. And so you didn't, you didn't. It was, dementia was um, uh, a more seldom uh, experienced thing. Less widespread. Yeah. And lastly, how would you say that, uh, I know that you're very close to your daughter, Rachel. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that her support in your life has made this experience, the experience of living with this disease, that much less hard, that much easier. Yeah. Could you elaborate a little bit about your relationship with Rachel and how it helps you? Well, she's, she lets me know that she's always there for me. 
and that if I if I need help doing something, like I can't figure out whatever it is I'm trying to do on my computer, she's not going to be exasperated. She's very understanding. It makes a big difference. Well, thank you so much, Inger, for being with us today at Predatory Nature of Information. I hope you have a great, well, we have a great rest of the day together hanging out at the Sun Yat-sen Garden. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Take care, and I'll see you again soon. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao.